only go so far and no further. But notice, when the Ruach of Emet, or that relational presence, his face, comes, and that's what it means to be in relationship with Yahweh. Listen, brothers and sisters, he's going to show you, listen, notice, he's going to show you all of his faces. How many faces do you want? And when Yahweh shows you all of his faces, he's not like us, many of us that are two-faced. No, 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 no. He shows it to you. He takes you from glory to glory as we are changed more and more and more and more and more into his image. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. We go from glory to glory. That's why he's showing us many, many of his faces. He wants us to be more and more and more and more and more and more and more understanding him and like him and relating to him in a relational presence so that we don't just love him with our mind, we love him with all of our mind. We don't just love him with our strength, we love him with all of our strength. We don't just love him with our soul, we love him with all of our soul. Amen. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Darabah. Yahweh. Yahweh. He will guide you into all if you stay with the program. The relational presence will never leave you or forsake you. For he will never speak of himself, but he will take whatever she, he shall hear, meaning the Ruach HaKodesh, the presence, the relational presence of Yahweh. He will speak, notice, he will show you things to come in the future, Yeah. He will esteem me, he will glorify Yeshua, for he will receive what is um, from me what is mine and shall show it to you. You see that? That's the relational presence, the Ruach HaKodesh, the set-apart spirit. What is the job of the set-apart spirit? To help you be, be Pentecostal? To help you have membership in the assemblies of God? What is the purpose? It is to, to keep you, to put you, guide you, nurture you, admonish you, walk with you, and bring you into ongoing relationship even when you slip out of relationship, even when you don't want to be in relationship, even when you've given up on your way! Hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. Even when you've given up on Yahweh, he's going to keep wooing you and wooing you and wooing you and bringing you back. That's the beautiful part about serving Yahweh. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at this, Yochanan 17, 24. Abba, I will, you should praise this Kohen Haggad all over Israel. Notice. We are disconnected. Ay, 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 ay. Mm. Bear with me for a second. Mm -hmm. Is that the enemy or what? Oh, yes. That's why you come to services. Exactly. Because you never know when the connection may go on. Okay, yeah, we were disconnected. Or we should be back on. Yep, we're on. We're sorry, guys, we were disconnected. Okay, um, 1724. Abba, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me that where I am they may see my Tiferet. So one of the reasons that we have been given to Yeshua is to enter into that relational presence so that we can see where he is and see his panayim, his presence. See where he is? What do you mean see where he is? I know where he is. He's in heaven. What do you mean see where he is? Que pasa, amigo? Diga me. What do you mean see where he is? What kind of nonsense is that? Here's what that is. To see where he is right now, today, this month, this year, this week, doing in your life and showing you things. For call unto me, Yahweh said, and I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know. Did you get that? Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Let's read it again, because some of you look like you haven't gotten it. Father, the day whom you have given me be with me where I am. Well, where is he? He's at the right hand of Yahweh, but that's when we get to heaven. It's where he is now, in relational presence, walking with you, that they may see my Tiferet, my, that's my, my, my presence, which you have given me, my glory, my kavod, Kevodi, my kavod, for you have loved me before the foundation of the Olam Hazeh. So we know you should receive it at the right hand of Yahweh, but 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 we want to know where he is. 
Because if we're going to love Yahweh with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we have to know where he is. Meaning where he is and what stage he is in and what he's doing in, in our lives in a relational presence. You follow me? So the Ruach HaKadosh was given to us so that we may know where he is and constantly see, understand, and grasp the purpose of his presence. Some of you look bored. Oh no. This has nothing to do with, well, if we've got the Holy Ghost, you know, we'll know that he's at the right hand of God. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a comfort you, a comforter who's going to comfort you in place of Yeshua. Amen. And who's going to walk with you in place of Yeshua. Amen. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Now I'm going to challenge you. Let's have a little fun. Go ahead. Let's go to, <laughs> let's go to <laughs> Mati Yahoo. Chapter 20, 24. And I want to look at this in a whole new way. And then we will close a little bit early so we can break bread and get in the flesh. Okay? Because some of you, there's only so much presence we can take. All right. Mati Yahu 24. Keeping it real, dude. Keeping it real. 24 3. Mati Yahu 20. If you do what I'm going to teach you to do, is spend time in this presence every morning, like Yahweh's been showing me. You won't care if you miss notes. You won't care about doing stuff. You'll use everything you can to worship Him, to sing to Him, to love Him, to praise Him. You won't care what people think. People, your wife or your husband said, what got into you? I, I didn't know you, you're that Pentecostal. I didn't know you're that emotional. You won't care what people think. You wouldn't care what people think. You won't care what people think. I said, you won't care what people think. It won't matter to you what people think. I said, you won't care what people think. Amen. And you're learning how to perform the great command. Love Yahweh with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. And you won't care what it costs you. It'll, I mean, it'll, it won't always be easy, but Amen. the cost is tough. Amen. It's worth it. Amen. To learn to do the greatest mitzvah. The greatest mitzvah is not being circumcised. <laughs> the greatest mitzvah is not doing the Moadim. The greatest mitzvah is not coming to synagogue. That's not the greatest mitzvah. The greatest mitzvah is not loving your rabbi. That's the greatest mitzvah. The greatest mitzvah is loving Yahweh with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. And we can't do it without his relational presence. Mm -hmm. And you and relational presence is not like uh, is not like Chinese food where you you know once once every two weeks is it's, it's enough. Okay? And then five minutes later you're hungry. Let's be honest. We move goo gai pan and after we after we pan goo gai pan and general tahu waha. After we finish with General Tao, ten minutes later, we forgot that there was a General Tao, and we're hungry again. We don't forget if the duck sauce was soy or if the soy sauce was duck. But Yahweh has a relational presence where he wants to, the tangible, that no matter what you're going through, you know he's there. And because every day you're spending quality time with him, and then you can begin talking Torah. Then you can begin performing Torah. But you got to take care of number one early in the morning will I seek the, the psalmist said. All right. Amen. Let me help you out. Let me, let me be honest with you. Keeping it real, dude. Once you start checking your email and getting back to all your critics and getting on the websites, the day's over. The day's gotten away from you. Once you start studying for your studies and your school and your degree and your classes, forget it. You're one of those candidates for the night. Father, bless me when I sleep. Please make sure I wake up. In the name of Jesus. Hello. But when you start the day with Yahweh, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, and you put him first, mm -hmm. you think, that may be the worst day you're ever going to have. I'm not promising you everything is going to go right in that day, just the opposite. But I am telling you, you're going to have the peace of Yahweh that passes all understanding, and you're working your way back to his heart. And you're going to become easier and easier and easier to obey the great commandment. Mati Yahu 24. Let's look at this in a whole new way. Okay, now we know this is an eschatological chapter. Let me make that clear. For many years, I've been preaching, Rabbi Simon has been preaching, for many, many years, Mati Yahu 24 is an eschatological chapter. End of story. Don't argue with me. I know that you know that we know that it's all prophetic. I understand. But I'm asking you to think outside the box today. How many have the ability, at least for a few minutes, to try to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. If not, then use his relational presence to try to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Daryl, I said use his relational presence. Mm -hmm. 
It's about the beast. It's about the Temple Mount.